In our previous video, we discussed types of costs. There are mainly two types of costs, fixed and variable. Fixed costs are those that are independent of the level of output, while variable costs change with the level of output. Today, we will be taking a look at what lies in the future for your bakery, Gingerbread Bakery, and your sworn enemy, Mama's Little Bakery. Today is the grand opening of your bakery shop, Gingerbread Bakery. Your wholesome shop is small, but its proper decoration, along with the sweet smell of bread and cookies, have eager customers awaiting the start of your business. You, the head chef, greet your customers with a warm welcome. Your staff is nothing but ready. You have decided to price your specialty, the gingerbread cookies, at $6 a jar. The customers see this and they get furious. $6? Mama's Little Bakery sells them for 4.5. Oh, the customers. If only they were a little more empathetic, no? Today, we will discuss why small shops may charge more than industry giants, what they can do to compete with them, how they can do it, and how one day Gingerbread Bakery will defeat Mama's Little Bakery once and for all. Knowledge seekers, enthusiasts, and leaders of tomorrow. Welcome to today's episode of the Student's Journal. Our today's topic is economies of scale. Grab some cookies, a glass of milk, and buckle up. Let us start by defining economies of scale. Economies of scale are cost advantages companies experience when production becomes efficient, as costs can be spread over a larger amount of goods. There are two types of economies of scale. Internal economies are all about factors within the business, while external economies refer to factors outside the business. Both result in declining marginal costs of production, yet the net effect is the same. A business's size is related to whether it can achieve an economy of scale or not. Larger companies will have more cost savings and higher production levels. Let's take a look at the scenario at hand. Small businesses have to charge more because their production costs are greater than those of bigger businesses. Gingerbread Bakery has just begun its journey with only one branch. Sadly, we do not have big machineries, spaces, or enough workers to spread out our cost of production. Mama's Little Bakery, on the other hand, is anything but little. They have achieved proper internal economies of scale. They have branches all over the country. They have achieved technological economies as their factory has cutting edge technology and state-of-the-art machineries. They have highly skilled workers. They have achieved bulk buying economies as several suppliers provide them with raw ingredients and materials. They have larger advertisements and lower costs of capital. They have also achieved managerial economies as their factory and branches have talented supervisors, allowing the business to make better decisions. They have spread their internal function costs across more units produced and sold. All of these reduce their costs of production drastically. Mama's Little Bakery enjoys internal economies of scale. External economies of scale generally have an effect on the whole industry and not just the business itself. So when the industry grows, the average costs of businesses drop. External economies of scale occur due to both positive externalities and negative externalities. Positive externalities include a trained or specialized workforce, relationships between suppliers, and or more innovation. Negative externalities, also known as diseconomies of scale, occur when cost of production increases with output, and that will be discussed in our next video. There are several contributing factors behind external economies of scale. When competing companies set up shop in one area, specialized workers will seek employment there. An example can be Wall Street. Secondly, certain industries become important enough to have bargaining power with politicians and local governments. This, in turn, can cause favorable treatments in the form of subsidies or other concessions. A quick rule of thumb. Subsidies increase production, while taxes decrease production. The oil industry has a long history of subsidies in the United States, which were historically given to continue steady flow of domestic supply. From what we've learned so far, we can now understand the graph that illustrates economies of scale. As you can see, as we increase the output from Q to Q2, the cost decreases from C to C1. This results in a lower, long-run average cost. For example, the cost of producing 10 jars of cookies is $40. So the cost of producing 20 jars and 30 jars should be $80 and $120 respectively. However, 
with economies of scale, we can sell 20 jars and 30 jars with let's say $70 and $100. We can see that as the output is further increased, the long run average cost starts to increase again. Why so? This will be discussed in our next video, This Economies of Scale, where we will discuss why expansion of businesses is profitable up to a certain point only. Most businesses aim to expand. Expansion brings them more customers who bring forth more profit and recognition, which, in turn, allows the businesses more scopes for expansion. Economies of scale must be sought after by businesses to increase profit by reducing average cost of production. Dearest knowledge hungry people, thank you for tuning in with us. We hope this video was helpful to you. The next part of this topic, this economies of scale, is covered in the next video. Happy learning.